Hi. There are now so many drugs available for psoriasis. Is there still place for a new group of drugs? And especially, is there place for the new small molecules? Well, the, with this presentation, I will try to answer this question. I will start with defining what are small molecules. Many of us may think that small molecules are something new in dermatology and in medicine. Well, this is not the case. All the drugs which we have been using over the years, these are all small molecules. So when we are talking now about small molecules, we should specify that these are new small molecules and the biggest group of small molecules are the JAK inhibitors. So just to specify, the small molecules, for example, the JAK inhibitors, they are not biological drugs. So there's sometimes a misunderstanding because we think that everything what is new is biological. Well, this is not the case. And today I will focus on the new small molecules. I start with the JAK inhibitors. What are the JAK inhibitors? Well, we all know that the cytokines may have certain effects on the cells, but there's one step between the cytokine and the cell and these are the genus kinases or the JAKs. So the genus kinases, they translate what the cytokine wants to tell the cell. And if we inhibit the activity of the genus kinases, then the cytokine will not be able to communicate with the cell and the effect of the cytokine will be inhibited. I will start with tofacitinib, which is uh, probably the best known JAK inhibitor. Tofacinitib, based on clinical trials, has the efficacy on psoriasis, which is comparable to etanerzib. So for a small molecule, it's quite good. Uh, however, it was not approved for psoriasis, uh, even though there was such an intention to do so in 2015. It has been approved earlier and later for other disorders, including rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and more. Why was it not approved for psoriasis? Well, the reason was that so in psoriasis, the dose which was required for higher efficacy was higher compared to the dose low, uh, which is used in other disorders. And usually this is 10 milligram twice daily or even more. And 10 milligram twice daily is a dose which has now a new FDA black box warning saying that it may be associated with the risk of thrombosis. So the lower dose seems to be safe. However, the higher dose is not indicated if not necessary. Another quite popular and well-known JAK inhibitor is ruxolitinib. It is approved in many hematological indications. This is an inhibitor of JAK1 and JAK2. It's not so popular in dermatology, even though it was investigated in the topical form for psoriasis. It is not so popular for dermatology because it seems that the inhibition of JAK2 is mainly associated with hematolog hematological effects, but also with possible hematological adverse events. Varicitinib is a new kid on the block, currently approved for rheumatoid arthritis. However, in psoriasis, in psoriasis it was investigated as well, with the higher dose being effective in 54% of patients when defining efficacy as PASI 75. Varicitinib is now in ongoing clinical trials in many diseases, including COVID-19, alopecia, and many other. Probably the most advanced stage is atopic dermatitis. JAK inhibitors for psoriasis and also for other indications in dermatology is a field of very rapid development. What is of some interest now is PEN JAK inhibitor. This is an, a drug which inhibits all the JAKs. It is approved in Japan, but uh, not yet available in Europe and the United States. However, what is of highest interest currently is the second generation of JAK inhibitors. It is of interest because these are highly selective JAK inhibitors. They inhibit only one enzyme. So with this, the goal to achieve is 
to increase the efficacy without increasing the risk of adverse events. So here you see some examples of JEK1 inhibitors, but also the TIC2 inhibitors are a field of interest. This is an example of a study of a TIC2 inhibitor in psoriasis with 25% of patients achieving PASI 100. So the results are quite promising and there are currently many studies which are ongoing also which took TIC2 inhibitors. Few words about another group of drugs. From this group of phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitors, we know well apremilas, which is registered for psoriasis. There are many ongoing trials for apremilas in other indications such as discoid lupus erythematosus, atopic dermatitis, and other dermatological disorders. But also some other PD4 inhibitors are currently investigated in psoriasis. And I think the future will show that more the molecules of this group will be investigated for more dermatological diseases. The last group which I'll be discussing today are the Bruton tyrosine kinase inhibitors. These drugs are currently approved, but many clinical trials are ongoing. And I think with uh, systemic lupus erythematosus and pemphigus being the most promising indications and the future will show whether and when this, uh, this group of drugs will be approved for these indications. I believe that with a growing number of excellent new drugs for psoriasis, we need to start intensifying research on tailored management for finding the best treatment and the best drug for every individual patient based on the prediction of response and safety in individual persons. Thank you very much. And if you would like to hear more about dermatological disorders and the treatment options, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you. See you soon.